Well, hallelujah. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so honored to get to come here and, and speak to you wonderful people. And uh, my subject this evening is your words count. Your words count. Now, why don't you say with me, my words count. My words are powerful. My words are full of the Holy Ghost. All right, now that you have gotten that settled, that your words count, I'm going to I'm going to look first at the uh, Genesis chapter one, verses twenty six to twenty eight. God said, "Let us make man in our likeness and in our image." And let us place him over. I'm, I, I'm changing a little bit, but let us place him over all of the works of our hands. And God, excuse me, God created man in his own image, and in the likeness created his likeness created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God uh, God said, un, said unto them, Be thou fruitful, and replenish the earth. And subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the, the every living thing. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Do you believe that word? You believe that you're made like God. Okay, if we read... Back in the first verses of that chapter, we find that God said, and it was so. 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 And in every case, it was good because God said for it to happen. And you have heard me say before that God was preparing a residence for his lover. So the greatest love story ever told was the first few verses of Genesis chapter 1. God created everything that we would ever need in all of history. We will never need anything else that is not already here. And if you go back and you look, you find that that television. See, some of you were not were not yet uh, born when they started making televisions. I thought it was great when they started making radios. But guess what? The radios were already here. He just had to give somebody the mind and the will to put them together. See, the te televisions were already here, but man had not recognized it yet. The satellites were already here, but man had not recognized it yet. The rockets were already here, but man has not recognized it yet. Now you see, God made man like him. Now if he made you like him, and he spoke, and what he said 
came to pass, what do you think would happen if you got to where you spoke and what you say comes to pass? Well, you see, the Bible does tell us in Isaiah that the life and death are in the power of the tongue. And could I add to that? And I think it would be fair to add to that. Health and strength are in the power of your tongue. Could I add to that? Prosperity and joy are in the power of your tongue. See, what you want in life is in the power of your tongue. I may not look at it like it, and I may not have but a few bucks in my bank account, but I'm a multimillionaire today. Now, that may sound ridiculous. Why? Because I said it. I am today a multimillionaire. Where is that million? In my spirit. That millions are millions, whichever it is, million or millions. I mean, that's a lot of money either way. Okay, so that million is down on the inside of me, and I spoke it, and you watch it happen. Why? Because God said, I would, therefore, brethren, that you be in health and prosper as your soul prospers. The soul is the, the mind, the will, and the emotions. So if your mind and your will and your emotions are prosperous, guess what you're going to be? If your mind and your emotions are healthy, what? guess what you, you can be? But you've got to speak it. If you don't speak it, you don't get it. I, I heard Brother Hagin say that, I guess, 40 years ago, or more, <laughs> more than 40 years ago. If you don't say it, you are not going to get it. Let me say that again. If you don't say it, you're not going to get it. Why? You're made in the image of God and you're made in the likeness of God, and, the, and all, everything you will ever need in this life are in the power of your tongue. Hmm. I was teaching along this line one time, and there was a certain minister listening to what I said, and he came to me later. He said, I'd never preach something like that. He said, what if some idiot come along and tried it? I said, if he had faith enough to try it, God would make it work. That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? But that's exactly the truth. And I think some of you heard me say the first time I was here talking about Juddy in the church at Lufkin, Texas, when my dad was pioneering the church there at Lufkin, uh, Juddy kind of talked with a nasal, and he was, you know, a, what we would call today a slow learner. So what I'm saying is the elevator didn't go all the way to the top, okay? So Juddy, though, loved God, and he loved the services, and he listened to what the preacher said. And my dad used to teach people. Now, as I give the invitation, if you if there's somebody here that you're not sure that they're saved, why don't you go ask them? And if they're not, invite them to come to the altar with you. So that that this one night there was a guy dressed in a nice suit and and you know you know there's somebody in town in those days if they came to church in a suit. And uh, so he was dressed in this nice suit, and he sat on the front row, 
and he had his legs crossed. And when my dad gave the invitation, Johnny went over to him and touched him on the knee and said, Hey, brother, you want to get saved? He said, No. He said, Go to hell then. This, this baker got up and went to his car and got the engine started. And guess what that engine told him? Go to hell then. Go to hell then. Go to hell then. Then he got started down the road, and guess what? The wheels joined the engine, saying the same thing. He turned around, came back to the church, and got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and became a leader in the church. You see, that foolishness of Johnny doing what he had been taught to do actually got the man saved. God did the saving, but, but as you see, it was those words, go to hell then, that got, got the man to come back and get saved. You see, there's power in your words just as they were in Johnny's words. God has a way of making your words come to pass in life. You see, he said that told the people in, in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 28, he said, you take charge of this earth and have dominion over it and multiply the earth. How many has heard that say they add in, in childbirth? Have you ever heard it preached that way? Yeah, well, that's the only way I'd ever heard it preached, but God showed me he didn't say multiply in numbers. He said multiply the earth. What was in the earth? Fruit and vegetables, right? It was in the earth. So he said multiply the earth. Now, let me put that in my words. You take control over what we have made and have dominion over it and make this garden and fill the world with this garden that you're in. See, God, the Bible says God planted a garden in Eden. See, we think it's the garden of Eden or Eden, of, Eden the garden. No, it's the garden of Eden, not the, the even the garden. <laughs> you see, you see, God planted this garden in Eden. And now he tells man to take take over and make the rest of the world just like that. How are you going to do it? With your words and your actions. So when you your words go out in faith, nothing. When it's in faith, nothing will ever change your mind about what you said. I said, if it's in faith, nothing will ever change your mind about what you said. Would you like to know what a decision is? A decision is a course of action that you will never veer from. I'm going to repeat that. A decision is a course of action that you will never veer from. A decision is a course of action you will never veer from. So when you speak the right words about you, your family, your children, your, your friends, your neighbors, and stick with it, I didn't say beg God to do it, because the once you say it, it becomes a reality to you. You'll never veer from that. When you, okay, we, I like to fish, but I like to catch fish better. Right? Okay, so I like to catch fish. But now, 
when I go fishing, I go to catch fish. I don't go to fish. If I cast about a dozen times and I don't don't get any hits, I leave. You know why? I didn't go there to fish. I went there to catch fish. That may sound ridiculous to you, but it's a it's a fact. Okay, you get because if they're not biting, they're not biting. Okay, but you see, God gave me the authority when He created me like Him in His likeness, in His image. He created me just like Him. So if he could speak things into existence, what can I do? I can do the same thing. Why? Because I'm made like him. See, we don't catch this as Christians because we're not taught it. You're getting it taught here, but all churches don't teach it. See, you are made like God, so your words count. I'm reminded of Jerry Savelle when he was working with Ken Copeland and their equipment was shoddy. And sometimes he would he would have uh, he would have trying to make the equipment work and it just didn't look like it was going to work. And he would say to Ken, "It's just not working, and I haven't been able to get it to work." Ken said, "You're in charge of it." But guess what? By the time the service started, it worked. Okay, and I'm re- I'm reminded uh, of I was selling automobiles in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, new automobiles, and I had a customer that was close to buying it, but yet he said, "I'll offer this as my last offer." And I told my superintendent or supervisor that he said this was his last offer. He said, which is a salesman, him or you? Now, who is going to say what you need so that you can get what you need or what you want but you? It fits, doesn't it? Okay? So it's up to you to say what you expect God to do. For example, in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm going to repeat that. Whosoever, that's me, That's you. That's those people driving down the highway out there. You see, that's those truck drivers. You see, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, let me ask you. Do you believe that you've been saved? Then say it, I am saved. I know I'm saved. Because God said that if I would call on him, I would be saved. Consequently, I called on him, and I know I'm saved. Hallelujah. Now, the word saved, let me tell you, I I did a research, in fact, about two or three years ago, and then, then again this, this past year, that nearly every place in the world, Bible in the New Testament that the word saved is used, health, healing, and wholeness is included. Did you hear that? See, every place that the word saved is there, that's saved means delivered. Delivered from what? What do you need delivering from? You need delivering from something you were born with? Praise God. He said, saved. See, you are saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall 
be saved. That means delivered. Even if you were born with a problem, God says you are delivered from it by calling upon him. I wonder if he told the truth. See, I called upon him and I know I'm free. Oh, thank God I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Why? Because I called upon him. I am delivered because I called upon him. Now, God also said, I am the Lord, your healer. And I say, thank you, God, you are my healer. Not only are you my healer, Pat will tell you, I'll say you're my health, you're my strength, you're my joy, you're my victory, you are my shelter, you're everything to me. I say it with my mouth because I believe it down in my heart. See, but if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, that's Romans chapter 10, verse 8, verse 9. But if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that you that God has raised you from the dead, him from the dead, you shall be saved. Wow, not maybe, not hope so, but maybe. So we confess him as Lord over my sins, over my over my my sickness, over my disease. I, I'm I'm saved over all of that. I'm free from all of that. Why? Because God said if I called upon him, I would be saved. Health, strength, victory, peace, joy. You see, all of that belongs to me because of what he is and what he said about me. And I'm going to say it with my mouth, and as I'm going to repeat what Brother Pastor Hagin said, that if you don't say it, you're not going to get it. Keep that in mind. If you don't say it, now when do you say it? Thank you, Lord. I am healed because you said that if I would call upon you, I would be saved, and that includes my healing. And, but don't ever say anything that is contrary to that. If you say anything that is contrary to that, that gives Satan room to work on your mind. Oh, did, don't you know this? And don't you know that? Don't you feel this? And don't you feel that? Isn't that what it does? It gives Satan time, something to put into your mind in the negative. But when we get take what God says and we take action on what God says, we begin to say what God says and not what we see, hear, feel, smell, or taste. So since God said, I'm the Lord, your healer, that's exactly what he is. He's my healer. I can't declare him anything but my healer. Why? Because he's my healer. He's my savior. See, he's my savior. He saved me by grace. There's one thing about healing. Nobody can ever deserve it. There's one thing about salvation. God, nobody can ever deserve it. But the thing is, we say it with our mouth and begin to enunciate it to the glory of God it'll become yours. So keep saying what God says about it. With his stripes, I am healed. With his stripes, I am healed. He bore my sickness and carried my sorrows, and I don't have to carry them. I do not have to bear them. I am victor today. Now, this, let me tell you this, I'm overcoming a problem that the natural body causes sometimes. 
I said, I'm overcoming it. Why? Because God said I could. Not because I feel it, but because God said I could. And now I am overcoming this. Consequently, my balance is not what it used to be. It has been, not been what it used to be. So I stepped out of a place the other day, and I thought I was walking on level ground, and I stepped off a curb, and I hit the ground and just rolled a skid back here and made a big cut here and made a big cut here. I got the car, drove to the to the clinic and got the doctor to sew all of that up because, hey, that, that needed to be, get back to where the healing could take place. So he sewed it up and he sewed that up. And guess what? I have not missed one hour sleep because of it. How this happened, I don't know, but I think it's probably that finger when I fell bent back so far that it just ripped it right across there. I don't know of any other way that it could have happened. But guess what? They said, can you use your finger? I said, yeah, I can bend it. See, okay, God gave me the ability to drive my own car to that clinic and get that sewed up, and I haven't had, had paid enough to keep me awake one, one hour since then or one minute. You see, God is what he says he is. And guess what? There's, some, there's still some scabs there, but the healing is already there too. The healing began when I, when I, got, when, when I got up off of, off of that place and, and people were trying to stop the blood. And, and uh, they, you know, it was a mess. But guess what? the healing began to take place right then. See, my carelessness, I wasn't watching where I was stepping. I thought I knew where I was stepping. So my carelessness caused the problem, but God has caused the healing. See, the victory is mine. And we, in the church that I was raised up in, we used to sing, Victory is mine. I don't remember all the words of it, but it goes on. Victory is victory and victory is mine. I don't have to get the victory. I have the victory. See, I, I kind of I kind of upset doctors sometimes when when I have something that that is not physically right. When when I about three or four years ago when I broke my leg. I mean, it was a clear break right in here. And uh, I fell. You see, Satan will cause things to happen to you. Now, some preachers would say, God sent that to you to teach you something. Uh, no, 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 no. God doesn't work that way. If God sends me something, it'll be health, strength, food, uh, victory, joy, peace, health, and healing. See, that's what he what that's what he has plenty of. Where would he get any sickness? There's no sickness in heaven, and that's where he is. How is he going to give me any sickness? How is he going to give me a cut finger, or cut hand, or skid that that skid was just rolled back there? But anyway, see, he's not going to give me stuff like that. Satan will cause problems in life, and sometimes our carelessness, as it was with me, caused the problem, right? But guess what? I was declaring my health, and then when I got to the doctor's office, and he said, that's pretty ugly. And he said, we'll work on it. I said, Doc, you're doing the work, you're in charge, and you're going to do a good job and it's not going to hurt. Well, he sutured it eight stitches here and ten stitches here. But guess what? I'm still the victor. You see, those things those things don't set me back. But I started talking about the broken leg. 
I got to talking to that doctor and tells he's talking positive to him and talking about, uh, and I think I told him a joke or so. <laughs> and <laughs> anyway, he said, you're the meanest man I've ever worked on in my life. He said, you really made my day. Why, I was, I, I was in joy sitting there with a broken leg. They hadn't said it or anything. It was just a broken leg. But where, why should I allow something like that to take my joy? My joy comes from God. My job doesn't come from the body. My joy comes from God himself, and it, the full price was paid for it when Jesus was resurrected from the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting anything out of this? You see, your words count. So from this day on, don't ever say anything you don't want. You hear people say, my this and my that, my doctor, my doctor said. You hear people talking about that? Now, my God said, this is what we need to talk, is what my God said, instead of what we feel, hear, see, smell, or taste. See, we talk what God said. He said, I will take away from you all sickness and all diseases. I wonder if he lied about that. I believe that's exactly what he does is take away from us all sickness and all diseases. Why, he is our God. I'm reminded of reading, uh, reading uh, no, I heard this testimony. This woman had been listening to a Bible study on the 90, 91st Psalm. And the 91st Psalm says that if we gather under the shadow of the Almighty, and I'll, I'll just paraphrase it, our protection is there. And that's uh, just about all she got out of that Bible study. But she, they, they, they kept repeating the text. And the text was uh, Matthew 6, uh, Matthew Back 638, I believe it is. Anyway, uh, where God said, <laughs> I'll, I'll get it straight here in a minute. Uh, oh, uh, Matthew, I mean, it's Acts chapter, excuse me, Acts 238. Acts 238, where God's, God said that, uh, would you read that, Doug? Okay, that it, so, but she only remembered from that Bible study, Acts 2.38. That's all she remembered. She opened her door, her front door, and there was a man with a weapon and said, stand still or I'll shoot. She, checked, she screamed out, Acts 2.38, and he froze. And she and he stood there. He laid his pistol down and stood there until the police come and arrested him. All she remembered was Acts two thirty eight. See, and he said he heard her say, "I have two thirty eight. You see, God. God caused those words to seek into his mind as something, right, that wasn't there. But <laughs> anyway, you see, she said what she could remember about the Bible. See, 
Acts 2.38 was what she could remember, okay? Anyway, you see, God wants us to become proclaimers of what we want rather than what we see, hear, feel, smell, or taste. We proclaim what God said. So when I proclaim that God is my healer, I am proclaiming what he is to me. God is my healer. God is my victor. God is my joy giver. God is my peace giver. My God is my happiness giver. God is everything I need in this life. He is my financier. And by the way, he is my millionaire. Hallelujah. That's how why I can say that I and know I'm a millionaire. I know today. In fact, I knew eight years ago that I was a millionaire. But sometimes it's been kind of rough making you my payment <laughs> in these eight years. See, I don't I don't talk about my problems. I talk about my victory and what I am in Christ. And sometimes in past will tell you, I walk around the house and I'll get to singing. I may not be a vocalist, but I like what I sing. And I sing it loud. And I get to singing, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Praise the Lord. That may not sound so good to you, but it sounds good to me. Why? He is by everything. You see? Yeah. Oh, by the way, that brings up something. I My first stop was just outside of, of Lafayette, Louisiana. It was a five-hour drive from here to there. And I made a race with this with this friend to meet me for lunch. And I didn't want to go to a, to a senior citizen's place to visit with him. I wanted to sit at a table where I were we could talk and visit. So he got to telling the people in this senior citizen's place that I was coming down there, that I was 99 years old, and I was coming down there to visit with him driving all that distance to visit with him. Oh, don't tell me that, the 99-year-old man driving, especially driving from Texas down here to to visit with you. Don't try to tell me that. So he brought a witness with him. <laughs> if, if I had to pay for it, he would have paid that guy's meal to, to, so that he could show get get him to come back and witness to those people that I had driven there and that that I was going to visit, went to visit there to meet with him. When we left that table, then we had to go back. Now, we came from the north from there, but we had to go west for about 12 or 15 miles. Then we had to go north about 20 miles. Now, I, coming from the north, it would have been better if we had cut across, wouldn't it? But I went there to visit with him. Guess what? That is a witness to those people in that senior senior care place that God is what he says he is. And God will give us strength to do things that in the natural we can't do. But we've got to declare it with our mouth. Your words count. I said your words count. And when I declare tonight that I'm a millionaire, I am a day closer to that million dollars than I was yesterday. See? And guess what? I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it any minute. I'm expecting it. Well, I won't have the money in my hand until I go to the bank when it happens, 
when I go to the bank, it might take 30 minutes to get all the paperwork taken care of. But guess what? I won't owe anything in the world. My credit cards would, would be paid off within a matter of a day or so. By everything will be paid. My house will be paid for. And my stepson's house will be paid for. Why? Because it's in my name and I've got to, I've got to see that it's done, right? And guess what? We're going to give Pat's son and her daughter a gift that'll shake their head. It'll make them say, I could have never believed it. And I, we're going to give my son and my daughter the same kind of a gift. Why? Because God is going to, pro going to promote it. God is going to bring it to me so that, well, I'll have to go to the bank to sign the paperwork for it, but but God is going to bring it to me so that I can do this for them. And I was thinking of some other things today that, that God wants me to do. And guess what? I'm going to do them. You know why? I'll have the money to do it with. You see, God is my prosperity. I wish above all things. Pastor Anthony, that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yes, sir. I have spoken here before and, and I, hey, I've never come here looking for money. I've never come here looking for money. But guess what? When I'm handed a check, you think I'm not happy for that? Why? Because God is the one that provided it. It wasn't this church that provided it. It was God that provided it. God put money in your pocket so that you could put it into plate and this church then would have to have it to give. See? But if you didn't put money in the plate, then how, how would this church have the money to give? See? So we have to look at things the way God looks at them. And God saw you in the creation, before the creation, when he said to the Holy Spirit and, and uh, to his son, let us make man like us, he was thinking you having the ability to talk like him. How would you like to know what God looks like? Anybody here like to know what God looks like? Take a good look. Yeah. Yeah, I'm made just like God. I've got it. You see, I am like God. I can speak like God. And I can speak things into existence. A scripture that I've used a lot here and, and your pastors use, and uh, that is, uh, we'll, okay, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 20, 23 and 24. Hey, and Jesus made this statement, if you say to this mountain of debt or this mountain of lack, or this mountain of health, or lack of health, or anything, you speak to this mountain and believe in your heart, the words you say shall come to pass. You shall have what you say. Now, if would Jesus tell you you can have what you say? If he didn't mean it, I don't think so. So when you say it, don't ever allow your mind to float off to see anything but that. For eight years, or maybe it's nine years now, Pat and I have been talking about being millionaires. Why? We signed the right papers. 
to get the, get those millions. Did we put millions in? No. We put a few cents in it. Relatively, we put a few cents in. It was just a few dollars, but relatively, it's a few cents. Okay. In fact, I will be a millionaire, and we have less than $600 in it between us. And she'll be worth a million, and I'll be worth a million at least. Why? Because I signed the right papers. I believe God told me to do the, do what I did. I'm, I'm not telling you what it is, but I'm, I believe God told me to do what I did. I told Pat what I had done. She said, I want some of that myself. So she did the same thing I did. See? So we're both going to be millionaires. You see, why? Because we believe God and we sign the right papers. You see, when, but if, if when, since Jesus said that if you tell the problem to leave and be cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart that what you say shall come to pass, you shall have what you say. Now that's kind of hard for us to take, isn't it? That here I am, and call your own self by name, who am I to say I am what God says? That's what we were supposed to be saying. I am what God says I am. So if he says, I am healed, glory to God, I is. See, with his stripes you are healed, Isaiah 53, 5. See, with his stripes you are healed. I said, with his stripes you are healed. Wait a minute. Jesus said, with his stripes you are healed. Did he mean that? See, God said you are. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 says, by, by his wounds we were healed. When did I get healed? The minute he the, that whip hit his back. That's when I got healed, is the minute that, that, that whip hit his back. Why? Because he took my infirmities and carried my diseases. And since he took my infirmities and carried my diseases, I don't have to carry them anymore. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to make this, this message this evening one of the most simple messages you've ever heard in your life. Why? God said it. That settles it if I never believe it. I said, God settles it. That settles it if I never believe it. Why? God's word is always true. God's word is always victorious. God's word is always joyful. God's word is always what he says it is. And you are what you say you are. And you can have what you say you can have. Why? Because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face shine upon you and give you peace every day of your life. In the name of Jesus, amen.